King Tutankhamun, more widely referred to as King Tut, is one of the most popular kings in the history of Egypt. However, unlike most popular Egyptian kings, King Tut's fame can be attributed to his tomb and its intriguing contents. Jewelry, weapons, statues, royal apparels, gold, precious stones, and a curse. Welcome back to Crunch. In this video, we'll be exploring the tomb of King Tutankhamun and just what were the archaeologists hiding. The Discovery of the Tomb The tomb of Tutankhamun, also known by its tomb number KV-62, is the burial place of Tutankhamun, a pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt who reigned from 1334 to 1325 BC. In 1902, the tomb's location, the Valley of the Kings, was explored by a group of excavators led by Theodore M. Davis, and they explored the site until 1914. Several of the tombs they found were easily accessible, and although they didn't find the tomb of Tutankhamun, they found pits containing materials that had his name inscribed on them. These materials were believed to have been owned by Tutankhamun or used for his funeral. After years of digging and searching, Davis's team soon gave up on their exploration. Convinced that there was still more of Tutankhamun's story to be discovered in the valley, Howard Carter, an English archaeologist, decided to excavate deeper, as deep as the valley's bedrock. On 4th November 1922, one of Carter's co-workers accidentally stumbled on a stair that led to an underground staircase. After several weeks of more digging, the antechamber, an entryway into King Tutankhamun's tomb, was discovered. Carter recorded that the amount and condition of artifacts they found in the entryway were intriguing. Many had been profoundly affected by moisture, which probably derived from the plaster's damp state when the tomb was first sealed, and from water seepage over the millennia until it was excavated. The discovery of this underground tomb, or more accurately, a part of it, was a huge breakthrough for tourism in Egypt. Shortly after the entryway was found, sudden strange events and deaths started to happen, including Lord Carnarvon's sudden death from an infection and the death of 19 other crew members. Lord Carnarvon was Howard Carter's sponsor, and his death, along with the other odd events, were attributed to the curse on the tomb. According to Egyptian culture, this is a curse alleged to be cast upon anyone who disturbs the mummy of an ancient Egyptian, especially a pharaoh, believed to be face to face with gods in the afterlife. This curse is claimed to cause bad luck, illness, or death, and does not differentiate between thieves and archaeologists. Despite the curse, archaeologists continue to explore the tomb and many more interesting discoveries have been made over the years. The number of tourists who visited the tomb increased so much that a replica of King Tutankhamun's tomb was made. The tomb was threatened by the tourists who visited, who may damage the wall decoration with their touch and with the moisture introduced by their breath. So in 1988, the Society of Friends of the Royal Tombs of Egypt first suggested creating a replica of Tutankhamun's tomb, so the tourists could see it without further damaging the original. This replica was opened to the public in 2014 to reduce the traffic and tourist pressure on the original one. This replica tomb is located close to the actual Tutankhamun's tomb. The location of the tomb underground also made it possible for moisture to seep into the tomb, therefore promoting mold infestation which can threaten the quality of the tomb's contents. In 2007, King Tut's mummy was moved to a climate-controlled glass display case and placed in the tomb's entryway, allowing it to be displayed to the public while protecting it from moisture and mold. King Tutankhamun's Tomb when King Tutankhamun ascended the throne in 1334 BC, plans for his large burial chamber were set in motion. However, the king's life was plagued by a series of health issues. He had clubbed foot, very weak immunity, and bone disease, and he prematurely died of malaria a few years after being crowned king. Of course, his tomb wasn't complete yet at the time of his death, so his advisor and successor, I, had King Tut buried in a non-royal tomb that was prepared for him, so he could selfishly seize the huge lavish tomb that was being built for Tutankhamun for himself. He had two extra chambers added to enlarge KV-62 to accommodate King Tut's burial. The tombs of ancient Egyptian rulers were furnished with materials that were thought to be useful for the deceased dignitary in the afterlife. Although Tutankhamun's tomb was hastily prepared, it still had very rich content, 
including 5,398 objects, 413 shabtis or figurines intended to do work for the king in the afterlife, and more than 200 pieces of jewelry. At the time of its discovery, the tomb and everything in it were estimated to be worth several hundred million dollars. Content of the Tomb The tomb has four rooms and a passage. Passage There are 16 steps leading into the passage of the tomb, which is accessible by two plaster doors. The door closest to the burial chamber was installed to protect the tomb from thieves, and it has King Tut's royal seal and a priest's seal on each side of the doorpost. The passage leads into the antechamber. Antechamber The antechamber is the largest room in the tomb, and the entire length of each side of this room is covered in golden artifacts. At the antechamber entrance, two life-sized statues of Tutankhamun are placed for protection. This room contained three wooden chairs gilded with gold and other artifacts were placed on them. The antechamber contained statues, baskets, mannequins, disassembled chariots, and several chests. Some of these chests contained clothing materials including tunics, shirts, kilts, gloves, sandals, and cosmetics. In his journal, Carter wrote about the antechamber. Details of the room within emerged slowly from the mist, strange animals, statues, and gold. Everywhere, the glint of gold. Among the significant objects in the antechamber were several funerary beds with animal heads, which dominated the cluster of furniture against the west wall, an alabaster lotus chalice, and a painted box which was an illustration of Tutankhamun in battle. Carter regarded the box as one of the finest works of art in the tomb. However, he mentioned that clearing out the artifacts was a real struggle because it was extremely difficult to move one item without posing a serious risk to another. Another important content of the antechamber is King Tut's throne. This was placed so the king had somewhere to sit in the afterlife. The total number of objects in the antechamber was between 600 and 700. Annex Between the furniture placed against the west wall of the antechamber, there's a small entrance leading into the next room, the annex. At the time of its discovery, the annex contained more than 2,000 individual artifacts. The annex is the smallest and messiest room in the tomb, but was not likely disorganized from the beginning. It is believed that the mess was made by robbers who raided the tomb and got away with almost $1 million worth of artifacts. Carter wrote, I think the discovery of this second chamber with its crowded contents had a somewhat sobering effect on us. Excitement had gripped us hitherto and given us no pause for thought. But now, for the first time, we began to realize what a prodigious task we had in front of us and what a responsibility it entailed. This was no ordinary find to be disposed of in a normal season's work, nor was there any precedent to show us how to handle it. The annex's contents include beds, stools, stone, and pottery vessels containing wine and oils. The room housed most of the tomb's foodstuffs, most of the shop teas, and many of its wooden funerary models. It also contained board games such as Senate, which ancient Egyptians played. Most of the weaponry in the tomb is found in the annex, and personal possessions that Tutankhamun apparently used as a child, such as toys, a box of paint, and a fire lighting kit. Burial Chamber The most important room in the tomb is the burial chamber. It is also the best hidden. The only sign of its existence is a weirdly structured wall that must be chiseled through. Four decorated walls surround the burial chamber. These are the only decorated walls in the tomb. The east wall portrays Tutankhamun's funeral procession, a type of image that is common in private New Kingdom tombs but not found in any other royal tomb. The north wall shows the opening of the mouth ritual upon Tutankhamun's mummy, legitimizing him as the king's heir and then Tutankhamun greeting deities in the afterlife. The south wall portrayed the king with the three other deities. The west wall bears an image of 12 baboons, an extract from the first section of a funerary text that describes some afterlife scenario. Aliyah Ishmael, an Egyptologist and her team, analyzed the painting on the walls. Based on the quality of the painting and the amount of decoration done, she deduced that the painting job was rushed, most likely due to the sudden death of Tutankhamun. 
Most of the space in the burial chamber was taken up by the sarcophagus and the four gilded wooden coffins that enclosed it. A wooden frame stood between the outermost and second coffins and was covered with a blue linen pall adorned with bronze rosettes. The sarcophagus that embodied the mummified body of King Tutankhamun was made with 2,500 pounds of gold. On the body and contained within the layers of mummy wrappings were 143 items, including clothes and accessories such as sandals, an insane amount of amulets, jewelry, and two daggers. Tutankhamun's head bore a beaded skull cap and a gold diadem encased in a golden mask. This mask is one of the most iconic ancient Egyptian artifacts globally, worth about $2 million. Apart from the coffin of King Tutankhamun, the burial chamber contained more jars, walking sticks, and other religious objects. Treasury The final room of the tomb is the treasury. The jackal god Anubis guards its entrance. This room contains the king's most valuable treasures, shrines, chests, and more statues of Egyptian gods. The treasury also contained 14 boats, each facing the west. Boats are an important part of Egyptian funerals. They are believed to be the deceased person's ride into the afterlife. There were more than enough boats in King Tut's treasury to convey the king and his shabtis. The treasure contained four canopic jars that contained the king's organs. Two miniature coffins that contained the mummies of King Tutankhamun's stillborn daughters were also found in this room. Lost Treasures After Carter and his team discovered the antechamber, they moved out all the artifacts to the Egyptian museums and several storage capacities throughout Cairo. From there, some had been auctioned and sold. Thousands of miles away from King Tutankhamun's tomb in the Valley of the Kings in Giza, Cairo, a $1 billion Grand Museum and Research Center is still under construction. The Giza Museum, or the Grand Egyptian Museum, GEM, will serve as the home of all the over 5,000 antiques found in King Tut's tomb. Upon completion of the museum, all artifacts from King Tutankhamun's tomb will be gathered together in the same place and be available for public viewing for the first time in 100 years. Archaeologists are working round the clock to retrieve several lost or disassembled pieces of these antiques, which are being gathered at the museum. Construction of the Grand Egyptian Museum is estimated to be completed sometime in 2022. Dr. Tarek Tofik, a director at GEM, said some details reappear and give more information about the antiquities. Archaeologists hope to find new exciting discoveries about King Tutankhamun by studying each artifact with new modern technology available at the Grand Museum. Although Tutankhamun's non-royal tomb was very unconventional for a pharaoh of Egypt, it's the only pharaoh's tomb with so much historical value thousands of years later. I wonder how Tutankhamun's greedy advisor feels about that. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to learn more about history on Crunch. Thanks for watching.